Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing an updated wish list. So we are at the half of half point of the year, middle of the year. Yeah, we're at the middle of the year. Um, so I thought, you know what, I'm gonna reevaluate my wish list, talk about the items that I ticked off, and um, try to keep myself in that focus for the items that are on my wish list. You know, better said than done. And um, I think I'm definitely overreaching in terms of me even fulfilling half of these items in 2021. And before I dive into today's video, if you are new to my channel and you love all things luxury, if you love handbags, if you're crazy about them, I would love if you would hit that subscribe button below and also the bell so you'll be notified when I upload new videos. I upload twice a week, or at least I try to, but I'll always have a weekend upload. Okay, diving right in. now. In terms of what I've ticked off the wish list, we are only going to focus on handbags because they take up the predominant amount of money in terms of wish list curation. Yeah, they do. Um, and they are the big ticket items. That's the better way of saying it. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna talk about the bags that I did manage to tick off from my wish list. So um, we're gonna start off with the bag that I'm holding right now, and that is the Chanel 19 in the beautiful caramel color from 21p spring summer act one like wow this caramel color is just mm, perfect love it um so the chanel 19 was on my wish list for like a couple years but it was always kind of in that like maybe category because at the time i just was like i don't know if i want to spend that kind of money on it on this bag when it was still new to chanel like they said it was a classic but is it really going to stay a classic has it really cemented itself as being like as classic as a classic flap and I would say no, it definitely hasn't cemented itself as being as classic as a classic flap. Um, but nonetheless, it is definitely still a classic bag from Chanel. I still feel as though it's a fabulous bag. It is great and I'm glad that I took the plunge. I'm really happy that I got it. And what better way to take the plunge than with the epic caramel from 21P. So yeah, that has been ticked off the wish list, and I'm very happy that I did tick it off. The next one that I managed to tick off the wish list, and I don't think we're going in any order here, or maybe we are, we are kind of going in an order. All right, the next one is um, the Kelly 28 in Cray, Celia, gold hardware, amazing, beautiful bag. Now I said on my wish list last time that I wanted like a Kelly 28 in a neutral or a Kelly 25 in a neutral, and I knew that I really wanted to get a Celia this time around because I already had the Kelly 25 in the return, so I wanted to go back to having a Celia again. So I'm glad that I got this bag, I'm super thrilled, even though the circumstances at the time I bought this bag, I bought it before like shit hit the fan in terms of my, you know, my passion for Hermes or my love for the brand whatever I don't know however you want to call it like I bought it I bought it just before shit hit the fan and um so when it arrived it was kind of not as like as great of an experience as it should have been um, I did buy it in the resale market I brought it from a reseller oh not a reseller a consignment store in Singapore um from CSCR SG underscore my beautiful bags. I'll put her IG on the screen. So I got it from her. She was amazing to deal with. And I feel like the price was very reasonable, especially because 2021 has seen the most crazy resale prices for Hermes bags because of the pandemic. Um, there is less stock at stores. People can't travel and score in France without much spending history. I have a separate reveal video for this. I'll link it down below. Bit of drama in it because of every. Thing that happened of course um but yeah very glad i got this kelly 28 i have been loving the size as well going in order of the next one that i got that is a tick on my wish list and that is the classic flap in medium i did say in my wish list video that i wanted a small classic flap but i had like kind of was like i wanted a small but i was open to a medium classic flap as well and um i feel like i still probably would have preferred the small first but I can't see myself owning many of the small classic flaps because of the capacity being similar to that of the mini flap. But yeah, anyways, tick this off. Still want classic flaps, just um, not too many of them because of the price increases and they're getting to be crazy now. But um, I am glad that I got this. It's in caviar leather, really thrilled with the color. It's very unique. It's a beautiful like lavender lilac pas pastel color. I'm definitely very much into pastels as opposed to like super saturated colors. So yeah, that was the next one that I ticked off my wish list. And then the last one that is a tick on my wish list is my most recent acquisition. And it is the beautiful gray mini 
rectangular with the top handle from uh, 21A Metier Da collection this year 2021. Um, so this is my most recent acquisition. I did say on my wish list that I wanted like a mini reissue in grey, but I was really just open to like a mini, any kind of mini classic bag from Chanel in grey because grey doesn't come around very often um, with Chanel. They don't bring it around very often. So I knew that as soon as there was a grey, I was gonna jump on it like a light gray. I knew I was, I had to get it. So yeah, very glad that I got this. I feel very lucky that I was able to be allocated one of these uh, with my Chanel store. Enough said about that. That is the bags that I ticked off my wish list. I'm pretty sure. Oh, and then I had some Send Rev bags that I did tick off my wish list as well. So I did say that I wanted to get like a midi maestra. So I went ahead and got the big maestra and I use this as a nappy bag and I also use it as my bag to carry my 13 inch MacBook for whenever, whenever I'm going places that I need to carry my MacBook, say I'm going to the hairdresser and I'm gonna be there for hours, then this is a bag that I'll carry for that. This is also the bag that I'll use to like, you know, like I said, nappy bag when I'm going out and about and I need to carry all the stuff for my son who is one just over one years old. And then the other bag that I ticked off my wish list from Senrev is the Aluna bag. The size is really good. So it does fit even like a big plus size phone. Um, the capacity I feel like is fantastic for your essentials plus that little bit more and then you got all the versatility as usual with most of the send rev bags you can turn them into backpacks shoulder bags crossbody yeah they're just super duper versatile amazing if you're a mum you need one of these bags if you're a working lady boss lady definitely need one of these bags because they'll carry your laptop and um this is the color mimosa latte which i highly recommend it is like hermes gris asphalt it just goes with everything perfect neutral um as usual i do have coupon codes with senrev um purse on fleek 50 gets you 50 usd off or you can use the code purse on fleek 75 if you are a new customer to senrev which will get you 75 usd off Link to shop Senrev will be in the description bar down below. Not sponsored, but they are affiliate codes. Put it this way, whenever I'm running errands, 75% of the week I am running errands, I'm using my Senrev bags to go and do that. I go and get Starbucks, I generally use my Senrev bags. And especially because I got my kids with me as well, majority of the time. Okay, so for the wish list, we are just gonna focus on like bags and jewelry this time, or like SLGs. So I am not gonna include like ready to wear shoes or anything like that because it's definitely seasonal based when it comes to like ready to wear and shoes. Um, it's gonna depend, you know, what I like in the season. All right, so um, also if there's anything that's not on this list versus last time and it hasn't actually technically been ticked off, then it, I've dropped it off the list or you know where it's in the maybe and I'm just not going to include like maybes I kind of want to be just talking about items that I'm pretty certain you know that I want to get um, some more certain than others but they're still in that category of yeah I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get this bag you know at some point in time maybe if it doesn't happen this year it might happen next year whatever it may be um, while we're on Senrev, I might as well, you know, say what Senrev bags I do want to get. A new bag to their collection as well, and it's called the Circa bag. So it's essentially a circle bag. It looks kind of like a hat box kind of thing, um, but it's very versatile. You can use it, you know, as a backpack too. Um, and I'm looking at the color mint, which is a really light minty green. It's literally like the color mint. So those are the Senrev bags I have on my wish list. Now let's move on to Chanel. I have some Chanel bags on my wish list. I do want another Chanel 19. Um, sizing, I kind of like, it's really gonna depend because what I'm actually after is a tweed Chanel 19. I'm after something that looks neutral but has intricate details. Like it doesn't just look like uh, a like wool or anything like that. I just want it to be detailed. And I also don't want it to be like with decked out with a heap of sequins either. So yeah, Chanel 19 in tweed. I'm gonna be very fussy in terms of the kind of tweed that it is, but that is definitely what I, what I want. I'm not all too worried about size. Probably go small or a medium because it is a fabric bag and they don't, you know, like it is harder to kind of care for a fabric bag in the long run. I do also want a Chanel 19 in the maxi size potentially, but I would definitely go pre-loved for that because um, you can get some good deals on the maxi Chanel 19 bag, uh, pre-loved. 
because the retail price on that is much more expensive. It's very, very expensive because it's a big size. However, it is still less than that of the um, Chanel Classic Flap Jumbo or even the Maxi. It is much less than that. So I think that the Chanel 19 is a really good option if you want like that bigger bag and still getting a classic bag. So yeah, the Maxi Chanel 19, but pre-loved. I'll link some down below if I find any that are a good deal because I'm not ready to buy it yet, but I'll link some down below. Pretty much everything I'm talking about, I will link down below in the description bar. Uh, the next Chanel Chanel item is a mini top handle uh, in caviar that was from spring summer 21 so I clearly missed the boat on this because when the spring summer 2021 launched and um, these top handles came out firstly I requested the Chanel 19 in caramel and I at the time wasn't really into that mini top handle I felt like that um, the mini handle was a bit of an afterthought however it definitely grew on me and now I really love it I appreciate the top handle because it just gives more versatility to the bag what was once just a classic flap that you could only you know shoulder carry crossbody now you can top handle carry it like a little you know like a little mini bag with a top handle and I'm all for versatility so <sighs> that being said, because I missed the boat on requesting that with my sales associate, um, well and truly long ago missed the boat, um, I will have to buy one in the uh, resale consignment market and um, ideally I'd like to get one pre-loved, but the chances are even pre-loved, it is definitely going to sell for a premium, no doubt about it. I am seeing them sell for like $8,000 Australian, especially if you want the color cray, like that beige color or the white, they are selling for like eight and a half thousand dollars Australian. They are way more sought after. Last Chanel bag that I have on my wish list, which has been on my wish list forever, is the Chanel Maxi or Jumbo single flap 24 karat gold hardware, the vintage one. So clearly I'm talking about the vintage one because they no longer do 24 karat gold plated hardware. And I have had this on my wish list forever. Like I've had this on my wish list for literally as long as I have liked, lush, like loved luxury handbags. Um, but I have regretted to not pull the trigger before when I seen it at a low price in the Japanese um, consignment market before the pandemic. I regret not pulling the trigger. And then Chanel had all these crazy price increases and then the price went up and I was like, oh, I don't know if I really want to pay like $4,000. But then um, the pandemic hit and Chanel went up again. And now they are selling for like, you know, it's really hard to actually get one in good condition. They're like five to like, they're like, actually, they're like about, you know, they're almost as much as a, a small classic flap, these bags, if they're in good, great condition. So that's kind of my regret is not pulling the trigger a long time ago when I, you know, wanted this bag many years ago. Um... You know, it is what it is, but I still have it on my wish list, hoping that the right unicorn of this bag will pop up. Okay, now moving on to Dior. So I do have a few bags on my wish list that I want to get from Dior. And the first bag I'm going to start off with, with it's the one that I've owned before. Um, so it's the saddle bag. I used to have one in oblique. So I don't want one in oblique again. I pretty much just want one in like a neutral color, like maybe white. Um, like a pinky beige um, or maybe even like a dark green or something like that. So yeah, I want like a neutral saddle bag. I do like the denim uh, saddle bag that says Christian Dior on it and it does have the oblique print on it, but it is like um, embossed. It looks embossed and it's monotone. So it doesn't like, it's not like super ridiculous like super obvious and like it's monogrammed but it's just not super obvious the next Dior bag is the Lady Dior so I had the pleasure of trying this on in store in quite a few sizes in the um in the what's the one that it is I forgot the name of it you know the one that's like this oh the the matte the so matte the matte one I forgot what it's called but you know what I'm talking about the one that's like the full monotone one it's more like a matte calf skin um yeah I tried it on in that and then I tried it on like the classic lamb and then I tried it on in the D light so I've kind of come to the conclusion that I do want something more unique when it comes to the Lady Dior and I feel like I want to get an embroidered version and ideally something that's more like a limited edition print I really love the Millie de, Millie de Fleur however you say it, it's like a floral print. And there was one on Vestia Collective that I, like at the time that it came up, um, I wasn't in the position to buy it because I'd already just got the Chanel um, gray flap. So I couldn't get it, but the seller was like willing to sell it for a pretty good price. So if it ever happens to pop back up again, you know, pre-loved, whatever, and it's for a good price, then I do want to get that Lady Dior bag. I do like the color Fard. I think that's what you call it. It's like a 
it's what I had on my original wish list. Um, it's like a really nice pinky beige. I do like that. So there's a possibility I could get that. I could, you know, opt for that instead. And last Dior bag that I have is, um, again, from last wish list is the Montaigne 30 bag. So um, I had this on my wish list before, and yes, I still do want one. Um, not sure of what color I would go for at this point. It's really just going to depend like what other colors I have uh, like curated in my collection and what time I end up pulling the trigger on getting one of these. Again, it would definitely be pre-loved. Um, all of these bags would definitely end up being pre-loved because unfortunately Dior doesn't really hold its value very well. Like the Lady Dior is classic. So yeah, like with all their price increases, you know, if you bought one like five years ago, it would, it would hold its value. But, um, it's just that like, if you buy one now, you pretty much have to wait like five to like five odd years for it to kind of catch up in price. Whereas like with Chanel, it's like pretty much immediately solid investment like it just pretty much holds its value from the get-go with their classic bags uh and now for louis vuitton uh i do want a couple bags from them uh the first one that i'm really really keen on is the cousin bag in the pm size and i want it in the beige that is probably about to arrive i think in like fall winter um, or white. Now I kind of a bit paranoid with white cause their white is super white. But then again, I don't have like a pure white handbag in my collection. So maybe that might be the right bag for that. Um, I do really like the black one. I do like the cousin PM in the black. Uh, the other one that I do like from Louis Vuitton is the Speedy 22. Now I actually tried this on in black at the store and I really love that bag. It has great capacity and the price point is actually less than the Cousin bag. Now I don't know if they're going to release more colors in this. Um, I would kind of want to wait to see if they end up coming out with more colors. However, that being said, I kind of feel like that black really does suit that Speedy 22 bag. However, again, with Louis Vuitton, I mean, like it's just hard because they have definitely moved away from canvas and I do really like their leather bags, but their price point, considering that so far, we just don't know if they're gonna hold their value and I could change my mind. I could decide I don't want it anymore. I just don't wanna be in a position where it's like I've paid like, you know, like the cousin bag is like almost $6,000 or something like that. And then the Speedy 22 is less. So it's kind of a little bit easier of a pill to swallow. Last of bags that I have on my wish list um, is Hermes bags. I still have some Hermes bags that I want, but I just don't know if I feel like I'll be ticking them off this year. I'm not sure because I kind of not, not feeling like I'm, I'm not liking the price in the resale market right now of Hermes. It is too expensive. Like the prices are really high. The only bag that I could see myself maybe thinking about this year um, is the Birkin 35 because it is still quite competitive in price and it's still not like people don't people don't really want big bags they want small bags so the Birkin 35 is a very good deal right now and I've said this before a few times on my channel if you are okay with the bigger bag um, it is a heavier bag the Birkin 35 I prefer to go for Swift because at least it's lighter it's a very light leather but if you're not going to fill it up you know and put all the kitchen sink in there then it is still fine to carry it's not going to be too heavy I personally feel like my Birkin 30 I fill it up and I can carry it just fine it's just not the kind of bag you want to take with you when you're going to go to like shopping like you're going to go shopping at Zara and walk out with like five Zara bags this is going to be an inconvenient bag to carry um like pick a shoulder bag for that but yeah, Birkin 35, some great deals right now in the, in the uh, pre-loved market. I will link some down below in the description bar because if you are thinking about a Birkin 35, definitely jump on getting one soon before prices potentially go up. Um, the next Hermes bag that I have on my wish list is uh, the Kelly 25 or the Birkin 25 or both at some point in my life. Um, but I want it to be gold on gold or I want one in Vert Cricket because ultimately... That's what I originally wanted, but then I ended up going for the Kelly Dance because it was much cheaper than getting a Kelly 25 um, in the resale market in Vert Cricket. I am open to other neutral colors, but ultimately those are really what I want. So I'm going to try and stick to that, you know, the gold on gold hardware or Vert Cricket. Um, you know what? I have said that I really wanted a Rose Sakura bag and I do. But, but I just don't know if I could pull the trigger on getting one in a Birkin or a Kelly because in the resale market, they are crazy expensive. They are always a premium. I would kind of rather get that in a lower cost bag, like a Picatern or a Evelyn or something else. But yeah, that takes me to my next point. I am thinking of getting a Rose Sakura Kelly wallet and then converting it to a Kelly to go by using the same um, like 
hack that I got from In A Bag Shop. So this is my Constance, Constance wallet in Cray. So In A Bag Shop, which is a like bag accessory customization store. They're on Instagram. They don't have a website. They're only on Instagram. She um, has these inserts that you can put inside like the Kelly wallet or the Constance wallet. And um, then she has these custom made straps. So that's what I did for my Constance. I have a video dedicated to it, so I'll link it down below as well. But I'm thinking about finding a Kelly wallet in Rose Sakura, in Chev leather, and just getting um, the, you know, the wallet made up and the strap. Um, however, she doesn't have Chev leather as an option for the strap. So I'd probably just get like Togo because Togo is a grained leather and so is Chev. So yeah, that's what I'm thinking of, of doing, you know, to get a um, Rose Sakura Kelly wallet because at least then it'll kind of like scratch the itch and it's um, at a lesser price point because you can actually get the Rose Sakura Kelly wallets for like half of the retail price and that will tick a big box in terms of getting a Rose Sakura bag finally because I feel like that color is like... It haunts me. All right, so the next Hermes bag that I want is a Constance 18. Um, I really want one in rose gold hardware or gold hardware, but I ideally want a neutral. So I want like um, Etan, maybe black, um, Gris Pearl. Actually, Gris Pearl, I would consider palladium hardware as well because it looks kind of like, you know, that monotone sort of color. Um, or I would, wouldn't mind a Rose Sakura one, but again, it's going to be a high premium. Or I would absolutely love a blue broom, Constance 18, and I would take any hardware. I wouldn't be fussy with that one. Like it'd be silver hardware because I feel like it definitely works with that kind of color. Or gold hardware. Um, yeah, blue broom is a color that I've been wanting for so long. Otherwise, vert cricket. So I've got some options there for the Constance 18. Otherwise, the other Hermes bag I'm thinking of is I kind of... I'm on the fence still a bit about the mini Lindy. I think that I would potentially get one if I can get it at the retail price. So if I can get one online on their website, then I would get a mini Lindy. However, I'm not really all too worried. You know, if it never happens, it never happens. You know, it's okay. Cause um, the mini Lindy would definitely be more of like a casual bag and it is a pretty high price point. All right, now we're to the very end of the wish list, and it's jewelry. So this is gonna be short and sweet. I don't have much jewelry on my wish list, but I am starting to get into fine jewelry. Um, but I can't really buy all too much, you know, cause like, I've got kids and they pull up my stuff, especially like this necklace I'm wearing from Ana Luisa. I was wearing it when I was breastfeeding today. My son was just pulling at it all the time. So I just can't wear fancy jewelry. Looking at getting, actually this has been on my wish list for years as well. It's the um, Van Cleef and Arpels Alumbra, Alumbra earrings um, uh, in the vintage Alumbra. Yeah, that's the ones that I want. I've been wanting them for so long. I still haven't found them because I want to get them pre-loved for a very good deal. Like, you know, I am kind of have a budget in mind. Um, I also am keen on the Tiffany & Co rings. They have some really cute rings. It says love on it. And I think they have some other variation thing. It's got like an XO or something, but they are at a really good price point. I think they're around about $1,000 Australian. I'll put some pictures on the screen. So I definitely want to get uh, one or two of their rings, but I have to go to the store to try it on to see what it's going to fit me. Um, I think they might do free online returns. Looking at the Cartier medium hoop earrings, they're like a thick one. They're kind of like about yay, yay big. Not like the big ones, not like that, but they're like a yay big one. Um, so I want to get that ideally pre-loved so that way it's less. Um, but I'm also open to paying the full retail price for them, which I think is like about $4,900 Australian, something like that, $4,900. Other Cartier jewelry I'm looking at is um, the Justin Clue bracelet with diamonds in the thin version. So when they released this in the thin version with the diamonds, immediately I was like, yeah, that's the one that I want. I really want that one. So that is um, on my wish list. I definitely will get it. I'm going to have to get it brand new, I'd say, because um, it's a new product. So in the pre-love market, it's not going to, it's not going to have a flood of them. Otherwise I'm thinking of getting the love bracelet. And this is a case of eat my words. Cause I remember before I once said that it was one of those luxury items. I just didn't get the hype for. And I didn't see myself getting one. Yeah. I have to eat my words on this one. Um, I want one. So definitely the love bracelet, you can find them pre-love for a fabulous deal. However, I kind of want the, I don't know if I'll get the thick one or the thin one. I don't know. Look, it's just going to depend, you know, if I can get the, the thin one at a really good deal, then I'll get it pre-loved. But if the thick one ends up being the better deal, then I'll just go with the thick love bracelet, you know, the standard size, because um, the thin love bracelet is not, um, it hasn't been around as long. So in terms of like the pre-love market, there is far more 
options for the standard love bracelet and that means that when there is more options there's more competition and that can drive down the price and that means that you may in contrast to the retail price get a very good deal I'm looking at like I want to save like thousands like a couple thousand on it um, but yeah, that is it. That is all that I have on my wish list. You know what? It's not all going to happen this year. There's no doubt about it. Unless I win the lotto, it is not happening. Let me know what you want to get this. Like, what are the bags that are left on your wish list for this year? Let me know. I want to know because you might give me some ideas. But yeah, let me know. All right. Um, yeah, I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.